years since Britain's Royal Air Force joined the military campaign in Syria and Iraq. Now the crews have been speaking for the first time about their missions against the so-called Islamic State. They say they have carried out more than 3,000 sorties and have come under fire many times. Jonathan Beale reports from the RAF base in Akrotiri. Across the Tigris River. You have a struggle for equality. I think this building helped. Defeating IS in Syria will be harder still. Jonathan Beale, BBC News at RAF Akrotiri. Its designer has described it as a living building for the black American experience. President Obama opened the United States' first ever National Museum of African American History and Culture this week. It's a striking modern structure and it's been built by a Brit, the architect David Adjay. He took Nick Bryant on a tour of his iconic project. This is a building that not only occupies the last vacant plot on some of America's most honored land, the National Mall in Washington, but seeks to fill a gap in America's national memory. For decades, African Americans have campaigned for a museum that tells their epic story, opened by the country's first African American president. It sort of changed my career, it changed my, changed my life, actually. The architect is British, David Adjay, who sees this as his opus work, and rather than designing a monument, he set out to construct a living building that contributes to the ongoing racial debate that reflects the ongoing struggle for equality. I think this building helps to really allow people to understand each other and to understand how people are interrelated in many ways and how the path forward is not separation but understanding and kind of coexisting. So I think that this building comes at an opportune time in America to really remind it of its incredible rich history and its own contribution to that integration story. Inside the building chronicles an often traumatic journey into freedom. The shackles and whips of slavery. The clenched fists of the black power salute at the Mexico City Olympics. But it's also a celebration of how black culture has come to define American culture. These are all real, nothing here is a reconstruction, so that really is Chuck Berry's kind of original El Dorado uh, Cadillac. So has it been a challenge for a British man to help tell an American story? I try not to think about that because if I did, I would collapse and I would probably need therapy because it's a very weighty subject. But I think what I bring to it is a professionalism about what I believe architecture can contribute to that, that, that issue. The building is steeped in symbolism, the form of oaks and African crown. The lattice work recalls the ironwork of freed slaves in the American South. Windows look out over landmarks of the freedom struggle, like the Lincoln Memorial, the pulpit from which Dr. Martin Luther King delivered his I Have a Dream speech. David, this building is coming to completion yeah. as Barack Obama's presidency yeah. is coming to completion. Yes. Have you been struck at all by the irony of that? It's been very beautiful, the irony. I mean, we started when he started his presidency and he was very instrumental in helping um, you know, get the first tranches of money through Congress and releasing that to really get the project going. And in, in a way, it feels like a wonderful bookend that, you know, from slavery can come, you know, a son of America who is of African descent, who becomes the president of, you know, the most powerful nation in the world. And the story goes on. This is the most important public building to open in Washington in decades. And surely the most meaningful structure that one of Britain's most celebrated architects will ever see to fruition. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Washington.